Physics is notorious for being one of the most difficult subjects at GCSE, but with the right revision strategies and mindset, here's how you can make it one of the subjects that you revise the least for. This is the fifth episode of a series that I'm doing to help you get the best grades possible in your GCSE exams. And today I'm going to be sharing exactly how I got an A star in physics. Firstly, I want you guys to go through your textbook, your notes, and use the internet to help you find every single formula that you need for your exam board. Then I want you to write it down, either using flashcards, sticky notes, a random piece of paper, Google Docs, or any method. And I want you to go through each one of them and tick off the ones you know by heart and if you know how to apply them to different questions. This is really important, especially if you're running out of time during an exam. For example, if you don't have time or you're not really sure how to approach or answer a question, if you do know or you're pretty sure that there's a formula that you would need to use for the question, just by writing it down, your examiner will be able to give you marks for that if it is the correct formula. Now going back to our original list of all the formulae you have compiled that you need for your exam board. If you're not really familiar with a specific one or you don't really remember much about it, then make sure to ask your teacher, ask a friend, and go through your revision resources and try a lot of practice questions where you will need to use that formula. Next, I want you to go and grab your specification. If you don't have it printed out already, then quickly search it up online and make sure you download a copy. Then I want you to read through each and every bullet point and take them off if you understand them. And if you don't, star it or highlight it and then we'll come back to it afterwards. In my experience, most textbooks include information that won't come up on your exam, so make sure you don't solely rely on them. Instead, what I did was when I was making my revision resources, I always made sure that I had my specification next to me, so that way I didn't waste time on content that wouldn't be tested. Also, when I understood each bullet point, I would tick it off, so that way I knew what I had covered. Now for the bullet points that you're not really sure about, use your textbook, your class notes, or even the internet to help you fill in those knowledge gaps. If you still don't understand, then ask your teacher to explain it to you. Ordinarily, I would also encourage you to turn your specification into questions, so that way you can use active recall to make sure you've grasped the entire concept. But for physics, it's not really feasible because it's more about applying the knowledge you know, so instead I advise you to just do as many past paper questions as you can. My third tip is basically unavoidable. If you haven't started doing past papers, please start doing them now. Ditch making notes or other revision resources and just start with practice questions right now. Especially for physics, basically all of the content that will be on the exam is applied knowledge. So that's why past papers are so, so important. Also, since there are only a few weeks before your exams start, I would suggest skipping the questions you find easy and only doing the ones that you know will be relatively challenging to save time. Tip number four is to use your online resources. There are literally so many amazing free GCSE resources out there, so make sure to use them. For physics, my personal favorite was Save My Exams. I'm not sponsored or anything, but I just really liked it because they had really detailed notes that addressed every single bullet point. So whenever I did a past paper question and I was unsure of a specific concept, I would refer back to that and look through it. I think there is a paid version, but personally, my friends and I all used the free one and that in itself was already really helpful. Also the YouTube channel, Free science lessons is actually a lifesaver. Although I didn't use this as much as I did for chemistry, the videos were still really helpful if I needed a quick explanation of a simple concept I had forgotten. Another really good resource is Physics Math Tutor, and they also have summary sheets, but personally, my favorite for physics was the flashcards. I thought they were really helpful, and they're on Google Slides presentations, so definitely go check that out if you haven't already. My next tip is to make sure you show all of your working. It is so, so easy to make silly calculation errors in a pressurized situation like an exam, and if you calculate a problem in your head and just write down the answer with no working, no matter how much the examiner wants to, they can't give you any marks for it. So make sure all your steps are shown very clearly, so even if you do get the answer wrong, you may still get marks for working. Also, there's something called error carried forward, which means that if a question has a few parts and you made a mistake in part A, for example, if you're working for part B was correct, but because you substituted the answer in that you got from part A and hence you got the wrong answer, the examiner would still be able to give you the marks for part B. Tip number six is to go through all the practicals that you've done from the start of year 10 up until now. Make sure you understand all of the experiments that you've done in class and which formulae you will need to apply to each specific practical. If you're not sure if you missed one or two practicals, maybe check your list with a friend or just go and ask your teacher. Likewise, if you're struggling to understand a practical, 
then also ask for help. There is literally no shame in doing that. That's what teachers are there for. And if you're confused, there might be another classmate who also doesn't really understand it. So by asking, you're helping yourself and possibly other people out as well. Also, for what I remember, for CIE IGCSE 0625, pendulums came up quite frequently in the practical paper, whether it was paper five or paper six. And also there were quite a few questions on density, if I remember correctly. My last tip is to keep a folder of all the questions you've gotten wrong. Whether you keep screenshots on your laptop or your iPad or even keep them a binder, whatever you do, just make sure you have some sort of way of keeping a record of all the mistakes you've made. Also, when you get a question wrong, make sure to copy out the mark scheme word for word because that is exactly what the examiner is looking for. If there's a formula in the mark scheme for that question, highlight it in your list of formulae and do more practice questions related to that specific formula. Every so often, also go back and redo those questions because those are probably the ones that will trip you up in the exam. Finally, I just want to thank you guys from the very bottom of my heart for all the overwhelming support. The fact that the last video I posted has nearly 200,000 views is actually insane to me and I am so, so grateful for each and every single one of you. Also, thank you for all of your kind comments and DMs. I am trying my best to get back to all of you and it breaks my heart that I just simply don't have the time to do that. But anyways, I wish you guys the best of luck for your GCSEs and please make sure to take care of yourselves. Again, I just wanted to say a massive, massive thank you for being here and hopefully I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.